mail, Simon Mayo. To arrive time's on and we're on our way home. Alice, welcome back once more. It's good to have you with us again. Thanks, good to see you. News of the markets, of course. Or not the markets, but sorry, business news. Well, markets very, later. very That'll shortly. But before I'm that, very excited day. about the markets today, sorry. <laughs> they are easy to get excited yes, about, it's true. But before that, the Olympic verdict is in and a year on, the UK public have said yes. The £9 billion price tag for London 2012 was worth it. According to a Comrades poll for the BBC, more than two thirds of the UK public gave the games the thumbs up and 74% said they'd like to see them come back to Britain. Well, with many of the stars of London 2012 competing at the anniversary games at the Olympic Stadium this weekend, Peter Tudor, Director of Venues for the London Legacy Development Corporation, is there basking in the sunshine and he joins me live now on the phone. Good to speak to you, Peter. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm all right. So 74% of Britons say that £9 billion were well spent. Were you surprised by that vote of confidence? I think we're absolutely delighted with the reopening of the Olympic Park as Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. Sounds fantastic because, Peter, if we cast our minds back, way back to 2003 when the bidding process for the Games began, it was a very different story, wasn't it? With London really flagging behind Madrid and Paris in terms of public and press support. So what changed everyone's minds? Well, I think one of the things that um, was really important for the bid was... was Many cool. thanks. And I understand that the anniversary games kick off at seven tonight. So if, like Peter, you've got a ticket, you're one of the lucky ones. Enjoy. Yeah, well, it's quite the legacy, really, when you think of it this time last year, the excitement. Oh, wasn't it wonderful? Yeah, yeah. And as you were saying, there's quite true, which was going into it, there was a lot of humming and hawing. Coming yeah. out of it, there was a lot of, no, nah, that was pretty damn good, was not it? OK, uh, the markets, as you know, I'm very excited about the markets this evening. So please <laughs> put me out of my misery and tell me how they're doing. You have every reason to be right, because God. I can tell you that in the city, the FTSE 100 index closed down, actually, 33 points at 6,555. But the pound is up by over three-tenths of a cent against the dollar at $1.53.7. And it's uh, pretty flat against the euro, though, at one euro 16, making a euro worth 86 pence. Three-tenths of a cent. <laughs> there you go. That's Something to get excited about. <laughs> My question is, when was McDonald's founded? Was it in 1928? Was it in 1948? Or was it in 1940? Okay. The kind of thing you should know, or you do know. Okay, that's your okay idea. No, no, it's not. I'm I'm guessing because because those weren't in sequential order. So I'm going to guess that it's 1940. 1940, I think. Oh, I like your reasoning. That was right. Yes. Well done. Very good. Points on the board. You see, always follow Matt. I got a question about heads of state. A strange woman lying in a pond (laughs) distributing swords. (laughs) Oh, Python reference, I like. So is it a federal council, the captain's regent, or a strange woman lying in a pond with a sword? (laughs) What do you think, Alice? I'm going to go for the for the watery lady. You're going for the strange woman (laughs) lying in a pond. (laughs) Would that that were the case, Matt? I bet you're going to go for that as well. Are you going to go for that as well? I hope Rebecca's listening to this. Brilliant. Um, Captain's Regent. I'm the gonna Captain's go for Regent yes. is the right no. answer. Yes. No, it's, no way. Sam Marino, head of state, has two people uh, from sure opposite right. sides of the political spectrum, and they're going to have the job for six months. Isn't that a strange thing? <laughs> Alice, you're a star, and there's no question about that. <laughs> anyway, now here's our final Being in Power song. You'll like this. Another try time confession. Nice to have the Dean of Deadliness back. And, oh, you're very kind. And Sister Alice joined us with Alice. First, we like Alice. First. Are you a forgiving type, Alice? I am actually. Okay, let's, oh, uh, let's mm, see how it works useful. out. <laughs> so this one comes from uh, uh, from Peter, who he, oh. sign, he signs it. Peter, age fifty, living in somewhere in Sussex. Uh, let's see what Sister <laughs> Alice is made of. Do you forgive Peter? What do you think, Sister Alice? I I don't think I do actually. I think this is a classic case of sort of male rugby bravado mixed with male miscommunication. Nice. I, just, I just think, no. No forgiveness. You're sterner than you look. <laughs> so what's happening out Obviously, there? right, you look outside the window and you just think, what better way to blast away those rather miserable January blues than to picture yourself on some sort of exotic sunny beach somewhere. So it's unsurprising, isn't it, that January is the peak month for summer holiday bickings with uh, millions of us Britons planning our annual trips over the next couple of weeks. So where and when are the best bargains to be had or... Are we actually better off waiting to find a last-minute deal? Well, let's talk now to Simon Calder, the travel writer, journalist and broadcaster. Uh, Simon, good to talk to you. 
<laughs> the one and only. Well, yes, and to answer your question and decide if it's good value for you, what counts is the final tally. I say free doesn't always mean free. Good to remember that. So where would you recommend uh, for the best bargains? I like to call it the pizza index. If I were to buy a margarita pizza, where am I going to be paying three euros and where am I paying 15 euros? OK, you're paying three euros in Portugal order a margarita order a marinara <laughs> which is going to be slightly cheaper because it hasn't got any cheese on and it is the original pizza basically just tomato basil and garlic top food um, advice from <laughs> well, I, I, is that anything you last can't week, do I, I was in Puglia in, in southern Italy last week everything you buy is going to cost 7% more gosh so I guess the answer is Mariana pizzas in Moscow this summer uh, most definitely although having been to one or two pizzerias in Moscow I wouldn't necessarily recommend <laughs> it I'd spend a bit extra and go to Naples <laughs> always the best way always the best way <laughs> okay Simon thanks very much for the uh, for the niche food advice always good to talk to you Simon Calder there travel writer journalist and broadcaster telling us where the best places to bag a bargain on the day are Simon thank you very much indeed Alice thank you very much indeed nice to have you back on the show 22 minutes to 7 o'clock it's BBC Radio 2. Alice, uh, how, how have you felt about this uh, tiramisu? It was all fab. I love the wine. I love the pudding. I've never had tiramisu as an ice cream cake before. I've only ever had it as a pudding. And I've always found it a little bit creamy, a bit coffee tasting. And this, it wasn't like that at all. It was much lighter, wasn't it? Hurrah! Good. That's the result. <laughs> yeah. There. 10 out well, of 10. I, I certainly didn't add any extra sugar or anything like that. That was what I was trying to do, make it a nice, clean taste. Mm. This is the business update from the BBC. The main headlines. The British government's been accused of hacking into internet companies so it can spy on their customers. A global initiative has been launched to find an effective alternative to antibiotics. And another strike in South Africa. This time it's metal workers who've walked out. I'm Alice Baxter at the BBC's business unit in London. A group of internet service companies from around the world are taking legal action against the British intelligence agency GCHQ. They claim that GCHQ launched cyber attacks against their systems so that it could spy on the people who were using them. Their lawyers are taking action in the wake of revelations about the security services made by the fugitive American whistleblower Edward Snowden. Here's the BBC's technology correspondent, Rory Ketlin-Jones. What they're looking at is claims made... Britain's Prime Minister has warned the world could be cast back into the dark ages of medicine unless action is taken to tackle the growing threat of resistance to antibiotics. David Cameron's concerned that in many cases, antibiotics are no longer effective, but very few alternatives have been introduced in recent years. He's asked a team of experts from around the world to address the issue and says international cooperation on the project is important. I think this is a very serious... Now for a quick look at the markets. And uh, Brent crude oil is down 55 cents at uh, $111.74 a barrel. And the gold fix is at $1,327 an ounce. This is the BBC.